guys, sorry for the late start. We are here and we are joined by Sir Jake Tillery. He is one of my friends. Hello. Yep, he's not a game developer, but he is cool, so he'll be chilling here with us for at least part of the stream. Let's see, so last time what I was spawning persistent objects, I don't remember what I was doing with this capsule, probably using it to play some UI, which we got done. Today will probably be either the second to last or last day that we stream this game. Any work I do on it after that will probably be just on my own time. I think it's probably time we start a new game here. I had to take two weeks off from my back, but that doesn't mean that we're not trying to finish it in a month. So we're already about five days over on that one. Uh, but the game will get submitted probably sometime this week. So that's good. So you guys will be able to play it in um, two years when Oculus finally reviews it. So that should be good. Sorry, there's a spider on my wall, so I have to um, take, I have to just make sure he safely gets outside. Alright, go spider, go! I love those things. Look at him go. <laughs> He's free. <laughs> He's free. Alright, <laughs> cool. Alright, so let's see. If I just start it up here, is it gonna work? Or is it gonna... Let me take a look at the spawn persistent object script. Okay, it does place it at its position. So it should work. And you know what, honestly, this is probably a good this is probably a good time for me to take a look at spawn manager anyway, and in here put an update function and basically just say if player dot position dot y is less than negative one hundred, go ahead and go ahead and set the position. Mm hmm And then also before we forget, we'll do player spy dot rb dot velocity equals vector three dot zero. So set the position and also make sure that it doesn't have any speed. Okay, and then we'll start this up. Hey, Nekmanet, how are you? I'm glad you came. Uh, I don't know if you saw the beginning, but this should be the last stream for Awesome AP Orb, or, or not Awesome AP Orb, the Silkworm. Um, and then I'll see if I can get it pushed out to you guys. Let's see here, so... Okay, cool. So the respawn works, and let's see if everything else works. I'm joined by Jake Taylor and Nick. What's up, dude? What's up? Okay, so it seems like everything is working fairly well. I mean, grab this wall here. Cool. You want to try, Jake? I absolutely want to try. This looks so fun. <laughs> this looks so fun. It's so epic. Have you seen it recently? Uh, I haven't seen, like, real gameplay recently. I've just seen you messing around with settings and stuff. Yeah, this game is, like, insanely epic. And we just, and Nick, we just came up with some actual gameplay that we can do. I mean, Jake did, so that should be good, as opposed to just swinging around. We're going to do, like, a crazy taxi type deal where you have to get places faster. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you can... You might want to stand or you do it, honestly. I would recommend that you reset your view once you get in there. Okay. I don't know if you, you probably know how to do that. Maybe. Let me see if I can get this chair out of your way. Because you're all like swing and hit stuff. Okay, and you know how the controls work? No. The grip button is grab, the trigger button is shoot a web, you can pull on the web, and that's pretty much just how you would do it in real life. You can jump the way you would in real life by swinging your arms. All right. That sort of thing. So for a second you're gonna be falling, then you're gonna spawn. <laughs> Wait, what 
Which button's next? Nice? Okay. Oh shit! <laughs> Toby McGuire didn't have any training either, baby. <laughs> Dude, oh my god. Don't pull like you're a baby. I don't know, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. I don't know what just happened there. I don't know. Either. I think you didn't let go fast enough, so you rebounded yeah. on the web. Yeah, the web pull is pretty much all the rage. And you can use the left stick to walk and stuff. Okay. And then it's, what, throw your arms forward to jump? Back then forward, yeah. Back then forward. Like, well, you don't use the analog stick, but. <laughs> <laughs> and you can use the analog stick in the air to get some movement, too. Oh. Yeah, it's like, surprisingly, it would be very difficult to be Spider-Man in real life. What do you mean surprising? I don't think anyone is surprised by the fact he that he makes things... it look so easy in the movies. He's just swinging through the city, no problemo. Oh no. <laughs> you should try building a web. You just let it go. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets scary. You're like, oh no. How you doing, Nick? You having a good day? I like how you like putting that together. It is, it is fun. Yeah, I don't, it's so useless, but it's like, it just feels really cool, I guess. Yeah, I wasn't really sure what to do in that situation where you have multiple webs in your hand and you web pull. Because uh -huh. you can't really pull in every direction. I consider just disabling it, but I think I'll probably just keep it to where it like pulls along your first one. Yeah, that makes sense. Not physically, but yeah, I mean, I don't think people are going to rag on me for it. Cool. Yeah, you're right. How do you feel about the buildings fading in and stuff? I think it's cool. Cool. Yeah, it's a good effect. You're not like, oh, the view distance is too short. Um, like, obviously, it would be cooler if you could see the whole city, but it's not. It's just not feasible. Am I funded? Yeah, you are. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't take I didn't take super care. And hey, to whoever just joined, we are just play testing with my friend Jake Tillery. You can't you can't see him because he's so tall, but uh, he's playing. He's trying it out. I think the web was too long. Oh, and you just hit the ground. I see, I see, I see. What do you think about the rock sliding? I think it's a super cool effect. 
Isn't it so epic? Yeah. I love it. I can't wait for this game to come out and then the next Spider-Man game to come out and to have like a bunch of the stuff that I put in it. Right? You know what I'm saying? Because they're for sure going to play it and be like, oh yeah, this is for sure how you want to make a Spider-Man game. No doubt. Which one's the tallest building? I gotta go to that. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, it's funny. As soon as you have the web, the like silk swinging, you're like, yeah, climb. I don't know. I'm not really about it. Yeah, right. I mean, this is still like, this is still super fun. No, I know. It's just like it's not a good way to get around at all. Oh once, yeah. Once you can web web right. sling. You think I can make this jump? Uh huh. You just have to swing really hard. No. <laughs> oh, and it goes where your head is looking too. Oh. Yeah, so if you're looking like straight up, it'll go straight up. Cool. I'm gonna send it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, I was. I think your web was like 16 times longer than you thought it was. <laughs> yeah. The jumping can be a little hard to get going. It's alright. I got webs. We using the analog stick there? Uh, I think I might have hit it on accident. Yeah. No, you, you can use it though. It like helps okay. maneuver a little oh, bit while it's really? Right. Yeah. Like if you attach to the wall right here and then just hang there and... Oh, nice. Yeah. That's I awesome. wish I considered maybe doing like it's where you put your arm, but that seemed like a little much. Like as if you were leaning. Yeah. You know, your other arm that's not swinging, but then you can't really do it when you have two, two webs. Right. I mean, you could, you could just do it based on the your hands position to your body, but whatever. Yeah. This is sweet, dude. I'm excited. Yeah. I'll let you get back to development. Sweet. So we'll see if we can get some crazy taxi in. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. I'm, and, and everything felt pretty good? Yeah, it felt really good. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it's fairly polished. Polished enough for me to send it. I think so. Uh, but I just need to... And that's super fun. Like, I mean, even without any objective, I'd mess around in that for a long time. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Dad. And then you had the co you had the coins, and you, you know, I think, I think it should be good enough. It's a good time. I think people should be pretty excited about it. Okay, so what... First of all, it'd be nice if we could... If we could take this position here. Is that not what the player's prefab is? And I'm your biggest fan. I guess not. Okay, so let's take this. Put that there. Take this. Put it there. And take this. Put it there. Let's save that. And now it should spawn in the right spot. Okay, I'm like crazy confused about the spawning and why it's not spawning in the correct spot, I have to say. Okay. Oh, it's hot in here. Jeez. Oh, it's hot. Okay, cool. Anyway, maybe let's not worry about that. I, I have to say I'm very confused about it, though. So you have the spawn persistent objects. It spawns the player. At this position here. Which is this. So, and then you have the.
this thing, it spawns the objects and it spawns them at their position. So one would wonder why it's not spawning it. in the correct position, but I don't know. But I guess it's not the biggest problem. What we need right now, I guess to get this crazy taxi thing going, we basically need a little UI that's gonna show up on your hand. I'll uh, get rid of that. Um, when you click the menu button, they'll show this little UI, so we're gonna wanna make that, and basically that will, let's think, nothing crazy there. I wonder if I can import Let's take a look at my old project. Um, awesome AP orb. Scripts, and I wonder if I had some UI scripts. Let's grab those. Let's put them here. Sorry, I don't know why I thought that was gonna work. That's definitely not how Unity works. Silkworm, assets, scripts, UI, place it. Okay, cool, and now it should import all those. Okay, and then let's check out the errors. The namespace rank could not be found. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so we need to get that as well. I actually don't, shouldn't need to search here. It should just be under, um, database. And we'll get all these. Yeah, cause they're gonna need to put in a name too, which I'd kind of forgotten about. That's okay. That's not too bad. I should be able to do that. We'll copy those and then we'll go over and we'll paste those as well. Make a new folder called database. And this is gonna be so that we can have a leaderboard. Okay. I think there's a, I think I have a add Newton soft, yeah. Unity projects, okay, CD. Okay, and that should add what we need. We'll just let that import for a second there. That's basically just lets us interface with the database a little bit, this Newton soft, or that's not really what it is. What it does is it takes things on my game side and changes them into JSON, which is interpretable by the database. And basically that's just what I mean is it's just a way to pass data to the database. Then you have this VR keyboard. Let's get rid of this. I guess let's get rid of this and let's Make that bigger again. You have this keyboard. We just need to change these to player spy. Okay, we're gonna need to
Okay, cool. And let's see if we can get a few other things here. Copy this. We'll also grab VR keyboard. These are just a bunch of things that we're about to have to use. So I might as well just grab them all and deal with the bugs that will ensue. Okay, that makes sense. Entitlement check does not contain Oculus ID. Okay, and that's fine. We're gonna need to import package, custom package, my packages, VRC destroyers. Hmm, I guess I thought entitlement check would be in there. Let's open that up. Okay. Awesome AP orb scripts. Okay, and then we also need entitlement check. Hey Connor, glad you could make it today. We are currently trying to, sorry, I don't think I was too late. No, it looks like you just posted it. Um, I'm currently trying to make basically some UI that's gonna let you start up what the game is gonna be, which is gonna be kind of a crazy taxi where you have to get to a destination within a certain time limit. And if you do, you have another destination and you have to get there. Simple game, just I'm making it because it's not gonna take me that long to make and should be fairly fun. And then we're going to have a global leaderboard to see who could do the most destinations before failing, essentially. So, but yeah, hope did you have a good weekend. I'm just grabbing some random scripts right now and putting them in the project. Yeah, it should be good. And I think today will probably be the last day I stream Silkworm before just releasing it. So that should be good as well. Although then Oculus will need to review it, but, and they haven't even reviewed my other game yet. So should be a while, but Okay, where is this created? Okay, cool. Okay, and I have actually created more here. I think I can well, first of all, I need to get my math.
Dang, I might have messed up there. Hmm. Okay. Did you have a good weekend, Connor? My math does not contain a definition for it. So I'm going to be just fixing bugs right now. Does not contain a definition for interval lies. Oh, I don't want to write this again, but I think I don't think I have an option. I believe that I messed up here. Intervalize a number based on bounds. Okay. Public static float intervalize. Um, lower bound float upper bound float out lower bound float out upper bound I guess we should name these in upper bound and in lower bound cool basically just having to write this again here <laughs> okay and then we go to art shaders Common subgraphs into a lies. And let's just take a look at this and we'll just copy this. This is what we did last time. Okay, so you have your input and you subtract from the input, the input lower bound. Num minus n lower bound. Minus the input lower bound, then the output of that, you take that and you divide it by the input upper bound. that right input minus the input lower bound input minus the input lower bound take that and divide it by the input upper bound take that and clamp it between 0 and 1 Clamp it between zero and one. Output, outputs, okay. Okay, so that gets this and then you take that and you multiply it by that number And then you add that and the output lower bound. Okay, and let's just make sure that that math is correct. Okay, so I have some number, it's on the, between zero and 50 and let's just say zero and one. Okay, so you have X, Let's say it's 22, that minus the lower bound, which is zero. So you get 22 divided by the upper bound will get you zero to one. Then you clamp that. Then you would take the difference between that and that's just one. You multiply it. But let's say that it was two, then it would be okay. This beginning part, number minus the lower bound. Yeah, it looks good to me.
Okay, and before I forget, let's go ahead and... Well, we actually have a few things to export. I have too many of these now. Where is it? I must have exported it before. Okay, looks like I did not. So I'll call it common subgraphs. We'll call it subgraphs common. Okay, cool. So that's one. And let's rename this my math. And let's export this. And I'm your biggest fan of all you do. Are you with me? And the reason I'm exporting these is so that I can use them later in another project easily. And I just need to make sure that they're updated for that reason. It looks like I spelled that incorrectly last time. Intervalize, intervalize. Okay. Okay, and then a lot of these are just player head problems, and that's fine. So we just need to change it to player spy, and that's good to go. And do it over here as well. Do it here. It's just a little bit of refactoring. Okay, and a lot of this stuff actually doesn't matter. Okay, very cool. Uh, let's see, so then we go back, we go into the scene. Okay, cool. OK, 
Okay, and I can't remember at what order those respond. Let me actually see if I can check that real quick. An awesome AP orb, because it'll be important. It'll cause a bug if we don't spawn it in the correct order. Wait for this to load up. We're just basically checking something here, and then I guess we can come back here in the meantime and probably apply all on that. Click this. Let's open this up. Okay, cool. So we got that stuff. We'll probably want to go ahead and in the textures. Oh, that's right. We wanted to do VR to see destroyers as well. Okay, very cool. And then we'll want to so that should be good. Um, and then we'll want to come over here get rid of that. We'll basically want to I guess just copy the sprites and then come over here and paste them. Okay. Awesome. AP orb is now open and we will want to. Oh, awesome. AP orb is open and let's see. Oh yeah, okay, I was gonna go into prefabs, UI, we gotta check out, oh wait, no, that's not right, scene management. Okay, so UI interaction objects needs to come before player. And then it looks like I also spawn a scene loader. Okay. That's all we need to know. Okay. Hey, Magnus. How are you? I'm currently, I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm currently setting up UI that will sort of let you get into the main game. Um, so we weren't going to have a game, but then I, me and my friend were talking about it and we realized, <coughs> oh, oh, dang it. oh, oh, 
don't know. <coughs> I'm dying. <coughs> oh, dang it. Ow. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're about to watch me pass out on stream. <laughs> so, oh man, my spine's broken, so when I cough, it hurts. Um, yeah, so we realized that there, we could have sort of like a crazy taxi sort of game um, going. So I'm going to basically seeing if I can get that together. Because everything else feels pretty good and is pretty polished. So Broski. No, you're good. I mean, I talk to people on the stream. I can talk to you in here. And this is Jake also, so. Hello. Mm, and sorry, I was... What was I doing? I guess I had gotten all that stuff. Let me go back over here to the city. At least I thought the city was over here. There we go. Maybe if I place this over here. So bad. Maybe if I place that there, the player will spawn correctly. Don't know why he wasn't. Okay, very cool. So, so then what? I guess I was, I need to go and take a look at the menu. Mm, that's not good. Okay, let me turn this down. It's not good either. I wonder. Okay. Anyway, so this will be the universal menu. appear to be missing a script from the other project, so let me see if I can find it real quick. Mm -hmm. Huh, weird, okay. Okay, very cool. So let's see if we can just get this menu to appear in front of the player first. And then we'll work on the actual menu itself, um, which will basically just be two buttons, one that starts the game and another that, um, one that starts the game and another that lets you view the leaderboard. So that should be fine. We'll just duplicate this button, but let's see if we can get it going. So let's go in here. Menu open, menu closed. Okay, so ball center is not going to work, so we'll get rid of that. Okay, we won't add any buttons yet. And there's this ball center. And if it's open, it positions itself in front of the ball center. Um, so that's not where we'll position it. We'll actually position it just in front of the player. Let's see. Okay, and so instead of ball center, we'll basically just turn this into a
Cool, and that should be good. And it looks like we already have all the kind of necessary stuff here. I'm gonna head out, man. It was good seeing you. You gonna leave? Yeah. All right, sweet. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Everybody. All right, have a good drive. Yeah, I'll let you know next time I'm around. And you, you gotta stop coming through Indiana without telling me. <laughs> yeah. Really well, the Midwest just calls me. <laughs> see you, man. All right, I'll see you. Who is it in your back? Um, so that's my friend Jake Tillery from college. Um, and he was visiting me for the weekend. So he lives up in Indiana. So every once in a while he'll come down and see me, which is nice because I'm not going to Indiana, no matter how good of friends we are. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't live in Indiana, Magnus, but I don't recall exactly. Sorry if that was insulting. Okay, so let's see here. Um, okay, looks like I don't have set event camera because it's kind of doing it for itself. But that happens when the scene is loaded. And I don't know... That's going to call, but let's just check this out. The other thing we will need is um, basically a set username for the leaderboards. We won't worry about the leaderboards currently. We're going to try to get the actual game in. So let's see here. If I spawn, will I spawn in the right position? No, but that's fine. Oh, looks like it changed. Uh, every once in a while, the Oculus Link will fail. And why that happens, I don't know. But let's see. Let me just change this back to an Oculus Rift. Although, sometimes when I start the game... Yeah, it's broken now. Now we have to restart. Um, uh, that's unfortunate. For some reason, Oculus Dink does that. If that happens to you, just know that you can just restart it. Save your changes. And now this will be about 30 seconds. So if you have any questions about what I'm doing, Magnus, now would be a good time to ask. Did you have a good weekend? No, Daddy's Open Awesome AP or so dumb. Silkworm. Okay, cool. No, and let's go ahead and quit out of this. Did you do anything cool? And if so, what? Please don't. Okay, there we go. Okay, very cool. The problem with making a fun game, you go in to test some UI and you come out and then you just play the game. Okay, very cool. Well, I mean, sometimes relaxing is pretty much about as good of a weekend as you can get, especially if you worked hard during the week. So, I was watching some Survivor myself. I don't know if you've ever seen Survivor, but it's pretty good. I was thinking about, me and my friend are thinking about making a Survivor Minecraft. 
where we basically just like play survivor but in minecraft and if you haven't seen the show then that doesn't really make any sense but yeah Okay, very cool. Um, so now that opens, so that's good. So now we need some actual buttons to do stuff. And actually, I don't, you know what actually, the, you know what we need? We need, um, we need to, actually, you know what, while we're at it, we might as well do, we might as well get these VRCs going. The VRCs are the things that Oculus makes us do or else we are not allowed to be on the store. So I just have a few scripts that kind of handle that for me so that I don't have to worry about it. First of all, I guess let's go to scenes, loading screen. And in here we'll add Okay, cool, sorry. Um, and then in here we'll add an object for the entitlement check, which is the first VRC, and it basically just says that you have to make sure that the, you have to make sure that the app actually is from Oculus. It's called an entitlement check. And actually along with that, we do need to go in, we do need to go in and basically get a code and so we'll need to create a new app and then make it for quest we'll call it the silkworm we'll create it and i can't remember if this takes a minute or not okay and then we'll come into think api Okay, and then we'll go to Oculus. This is a little different looking than I'm used to, but let's just go to platform. Do that, do that. Okay, cool. And that'll help with the entitlement check. It basically links it like they give you this code and then you put it in your unity project and that tells them like oh that's the app that we're letting them make okay and then the question was where to put the vrc destroyers let's take a look at these So that doesn't need to go on the player. That does need to go on the player. Okay, cool. Let's create a new object. Let's call it VRCs. Let's add that, let's add this, let's make it a prefab, let's do this, let's make this six. Let's add it, 
guess let's put it after the player. Let's apply that so that it's spawned. Let's get rid of that. Let's then go into the player. Actually, you know what? Let's go into the hand and we'll add turn. Hmm, what was it called? VRC destroyers, hand model, remove hands on pause, very cool. And then we'll do right hand, open that up. And then remove hands on pause. I think I left my hoodie somewhere. Okay, so now those VRC should be taken care of. And I'm kind of all over the place with this, but whatever. All right, see you, Rosie. Now this VRC should be taken care of. I believe that was kind of the whole reason I... Okay, let's see. All right, so we're looking for hands that go away when you pause. Oh no. Okay, so Unity is broken. Okay, never mind. Oh, it's just failing the... It's failing the entitlement check. Although I can't say why. Let's try this again. Okay, it's again failing the entitlement and check. Yeah, so it's not uncommon to have problems with Oculus. That is the right number. Okay, yeah, so I think it's just an Oculus problem. As far as I know and have always done, you just get that app ID and you put it in here. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, let's just do something silly real quick. Bull in editor equals false. 
if Unity Editor, this is not how you want to do this, but I don't really care. Yo, just drop by to say hi. How's your? <laughs> it's actually pretty good, Thought Drifter, and I'm glad you stopped by. Um, it is pretty good. It's healing pretty quickly. Apparently, it was a pretty good break as far as it goes. So you can see I'm able to sit here and, and do stuff. Um, I feel like a little bit of pressure maybe on my spine, but it's not painful or anything like that. So that's good. It's too bad you're working in the office again. Um, that's a bummer, but also probably better for you, just more social in general, but I'll still see you. Let's see. So I'm, oh, oh and I've gotten a bunch of stuff in. Let's see. Um, that I could probably show you. I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw, I, I guess you, you had seen. I guess you had seen all the swinging and stuff, but yeah, basically the swinging. Uh oh. Ah. No, it's like really hard to swing now. Oh, I fell. Woo. But yeah, overall, I think it's pretty good. I watched replays of your last two streams over the weekend while I was developing stuff. Okay, very cool. Uh, working from home for now, but we're quite busy. Uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, I Yeah, how is the meditation app going? Where are you in the whole development of that? Like, how far along is it, would you say? Okay, so that's all good. It pauses, your hands go away. The sound pauses. Okay, so that's all what we'd want. The menu's working nicely. Now we need to... Um... I don't know if you're saying, I imagine you're saying, yeah, looking really good to almost done, just keeping it simple. Okay, very cool. Do you know if you'll be able to deploy on App Lab? And if you have any problems with that, let me know and I can help you because I've obviously done it several times now. So I kind of, I know what they'll reject you for and stuff like that. So I can help you out there. And I think keeping it simple is a great place to start. I mean, even, I mean, I keep it simple in my game. So obviously I feel that a good thing to do. My games are about as simple as they come. Let's see here. Okay, so we open up main testing. What what all is in it? Do you have like like two spaces and a and a couple songs or I don't know if you'd ever told me if it was like had like guided meditation or anything like that, but Hmm, okay, so YouTube. Oh, and Magnus is in here. Actually, Magnus, I, it looks like Magnus perhaps stepped out, but Magnus was here. He's a cool guy. You'd like him. Okay, cool. So now, let me think. I need a... I need to go to the player. You have this XR controller. And I don't recall, looking really good in reference to Silkworm Swinging and Wall Climbing looks fun. Yeah, I'm excited for you to try it. It is, it's real, I'm not gonna lie to you, it is really fun. A lot of times while developing, I'll lose myself in just playing it and I'll forget what I was even trying to test. 
Let me go look at how I did this in Awesome AP Orb. I'm forgetting. I basically need your hand, I need your UI laser to turn on. Okay, prefabs, flare. Okay, so there was the hands and then there was this UI hand. I wonder if I can just copy this and just totally paste it over here. Hmm, doesn't look like it. I could have sworn I've done this before. That's okay. UI hand, turn on UI interaction. We'll just create an empty here. Do I not have that script in here? Let me go get it from Awesome AP Orb. Okay, very cool. And give me one second and I'll read that. Let me just finish up my thought here. Okay, come on. Okay, I'll need to do some work there. Um, all right, I'll see you later, Magnus. Thanks for stopping by. In reference to silkworm, yeah, it's simple. Just cycling through a set of colors, color therapy time. Okay, you had said this. And showing affirmations, option to turn off, and there's colored particles that you can play with, throw, etc. Found a side gig for later in May, June. There's a guy who has a small VR studio. Oh, dang, that's sweet. That's sweet, thought. Do you know what kind of VR stuff he does? That's awesome. You're well on your way to becoming a VR developer then. Because most people don't even have any VR experience, you know, and so you all actually have worked. Okay. Can I just create... I create it under here. Okay, cool. I'm just copying a bunch of stuff from the other the other project just because it's all the same right hand ray should pretty much be good
Okay. Yeah, it's for an old folks who are using VR to evaluate the elderly and their risk of falling and ability to detect early dementia all based on science. Another project involves training for caretakers. Okay, cool. No, I mean, that That sounds awesome. Use VR to help people. That's certainly a good move. And it's directly up your alley. You're already doing a meditation thing, so that makes total sense. Yeah, that'll be great. Dang, okay. And I guess it's just, yeah, I guess it's just some old, big old folks home buying 50 headsets and you guys are making applications for them. That's awesome. That's really cool. Ooh. Do you know if it's like several old folks homes or is it just one huge one? Okay, so menu opened... Menu closed. Okay, so let's see. Maybe, honestly, maybe that'll work. Let's go back to the loading screen. Let's play. Dang. I mean, that's sweet. A project with immediate impact like that. And then you can do your own side projects anyway. Okay, so that's good. It's funny how fast these things can come together if you've already done it and are just like stealing from your other projects. Yeah, baby. Oh man, that was freaking epic. I need to make some sort of like zip line. I wonder if I could. I wonder if I could. Let me think, how would I do that? Cause the analog stick is free to me right now. More or less, like if I'm climbing, if you're climbing, you can't walk. So I could use the analog stick. So I could, oh my gosh, I want to do that. That sounds hilarious to me. So I could technically use the analog stick to um, push you back and forth along the rope that you're climbing if you are climbing a rope. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down. That sounds awesome. You like really up my alley. Honestly... Honestly, good on you for finish for even finishing the app once you get another idea in your head. Like, the reason I'm making a game a month is because I literally cannot go any longer without coming up with a new idea and going like, Ugh, I'm not making this one anymore, I'm making that one. So, to VR interaction framework on Unity Essence Store has Zipline, that would be sweet. Huh. I think I can make it myself quick enough that I don't want to have to deal with whatever they did and try to integrate it, but... Yeah, I think the zipline would be really epic. So I'll probably try to get that in there. Let me see. Using analog stick. Um, but yeah, just power through the meditation app and then make that archery one. That sounds awesome. And archery stuff is just so fun in VR. It's crazy fun. Do you do archery in real life? I used to do it back in the day. Let's see here. Um, okay, so that UI was good. The only thing I needed to change was the... Let's go ahead and close Awesome AP Orb so I don't forget which project I'm working on. The only thing I needed to change was that... The ray was way too big. And how big was it? It was somewhere in here. Here we go, the width.
0.02. Why am I having a hard time coming up with what would be a smaller version of that? I guess we can just do 0.01 and see. We'll check that out. But other than that, I used to planning on getting back into it this summer. It's like surprisingly fun archery. I mean, I guess a lot of people find it fun, so it's not like surprising technically, but a lot of people don't do it. And going out into a field and just kind of like, you got your comp, I don't know if you shoot recurve or compound, but just uh, letting loose on these arrows, that's just a great time. Really fun sport. Good back workout too. Okay, so, okay, so now I need to go into the prefab, see why menu handle, menu button, and then basically we'll have like, basically we'll have, <laughs> in one of my games, in one of my games, instead of a you lose screen, I had a screen that said you are a loser. And I just thought it was so funny that the simple word change is so much more messed up. Because saying you lose is really whatever, but saying, like, cause it, it's also ridiculous because it was for some, like, dumb game, but. Hopefully nobody took it to heart. I can't imagine you would. I knew it. I knew I was a loser. I can't even do the silk word. Okay, main menu button. Um, so let's do the second one will be show leaderboard button. Leaderboard text and we'll take this one and do show leaderboard. And this other one we'll do start text. And we'll change this to start game yeah I might do it in this one too but I already have the bow and arrows working well on the demo project oh, okay so you're not waiting either you're you're going straight to the archery found a great tutorial on YouTube yeah yeah YouTube is the place for sure show leaderboard start game and let's go ahead and make this yeah, that's awesome. Do you have like the string pulling back and stuff? And let's go ahead and put a set color on this. And we will set it to blue. And then on the start text, we'll do a set color. And we'll set it to white pure. And we need to get I think we're missing, well, maybe we can just do it this way. No, let's, this will be a little bit faster. Going to awesome AP orb. I believe it's gonna be under resources, fonts. Okay, cool. And then we'll switch back over. And we'll go into resources and we'll paste the fonts. And we'll come back here. Okay, and that will give us Nunita, which is my font of choice. There we go. Set it to header. Okay, start game, so this, and now we're just doing some UI design here. We'll be smaller. And a little bit further away in the show leaderboard will be about there. It needs to actually be a tiny bit bigger. You know what? They should probably just be next to each other. So we'll do this and we'll do this. Cool. I guess I won't. Well, okay. Come on. Come on, Dom. Let's center it. There we go. Hopefully that'll be good. We can take a look at it real quick. Yeah, it uses a line renderer. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess that would be the easy way to do it, right? Because then you just need three positions. One, where their hand is, and then the two um, hooks for the bow. So, yeah, that makes sense. Line renderer is surprisingly versatile.
Okay, and let's, I guess, take a look at that menu, just make sure it looks good in VR, and then at the same time we can also check out. Okay, that UI is still big, the menu does look good though, so that's good. Okay, very cool. So now we'll, now I suppose we will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I'm probably failing the entitlement check. I think I need to add myself. I think I need to go into release channels, add one to. Yeah, I guess I have to do this. I didn't really want to do this right now, but let's just do it. Release channels, alpha, upload new build. Uh... Yeah, okay. I'm definitely not gonna do that. I'm instead gonna do this because I don't wanna use the command line. Let's go into the silkworm, and I have a build. I don't think it's going to pass whatever it needs to pass here, though. Because I don't think it's going to have a correct manifest file or anything like that. So maybe I just won't worry about this right now. Okay, so we come back here. And we were, that stupid line renderer was still thick. This UI hand. And this just turns it on and off. So it really doesn't have anything to do with this. Okay, and this was set to 0.02 again for some reason. I don't know if... Oh, here we go. I knew there was something. 0.07. Okay, cool. So that's... Heard you mentioning in another stream that you reached out to a guy to possibly do multiplayer. Any news on that? That would be cool. Yeah, so what basically happened was his name's Justin, and he's kind of at the same spot I'm at, but... Um, I was going to reach out and say like, yeah, we could collab basically. Um, and then I, he has a job right now, so he doesn't have time to make the games. I would make the games and he would like kind of help boost my YouTube. And then I would boost his, you know, like, I don't know, basically it'd be some collab. But then, um, when I reached out to him, I think he looked at my YouTube and saw I had less YouTube followers than he has. And I imagine at that point he got disinterested. If I could get him on the phone, I could tell him that, um, I have like 2.5k TikTok followers now, so I'm doing well in that arena. Um, but it, I've been having a hard time getting him on the phone. So seems like a really cool guy though. So hopefully he'll he'll do that soon. But yeah, after this game, I might take a short break and work on I still stream it, but um, a short break from the games and work on like some Unity packages. And one of those might be multiplayer. Um, that way I can get started with adding multiplayer to games fairly easily. Although I just, I just, I truly think I need two people before I start adding multiplayer. Otherwise it's just going to be a huge pain. Okay, sorry, I was getting some messages there. Um, okay, cool. So now that laser should be smaller, and now we basically, and it looked good, so now we basically need to get rid of all these I'm going to universal menu and then there's gonna be two buttons on it and we'll just make them oh not good 
Okay, and we'll make these public. I don't even know if what I was using back button for. Okay, that's why I figured nothing. And we'll call this one um, show leaderboard button, and we'll call this one um, start game button. Very cool. And then in start, we'll go ahead and do. Hmm, I'd like to get button decorator in here. Let me do that real quick. Hmm, I guess I never had it. Okay, that's fine. We don't necessarily need it. On click dot add listener. Give it a nice little lambda function thing. Okay, and then I suppose in that we'll have, I guess a game manager. Let's do, um, let's do like, I guess it'll just be called game manager start game. Okay, cool. And then in the other button, it will be show the leaderboard page. Okay, cool. Okay, we'll add that, and then we need to make a game manager. Okay, so now we have the UI working. So now we need to work on the actual game. I think I might have said this to you, Thought, when you joined, but basically we're gonna make like a crazy taxi type thing. Um, it's the simplest and funnest I could think of. Obviously there's funner ideas, but this is like the, if we're looking at like an intersection of simple and fun, uh, this is probably the highest I can think of. Where basically it'll give you a point you have to go to it and then if you get to it it resets the time and then you go to the next one and then we'll have a global leaderboard to see who can get to the most points before losing and i personally hate games like that actually but i think that it's pretty good for what it is okay we'll call it crazy taxi We'll create a script called game manager. Oh dang. Okay. Never mind. I guess I'm not calling it game manager. Um it looks like maybe that's Um, so yeah, I think I should be able to get the coins in as well. And I do want to get the coins in. So yeah, so then it's like, oh, I should get the coins so that I can level up so that I can be better at the game so that I can get higher on the leaderboard. I think that will be enough like, uh, for people's brains, um, to keep them into it for a while. Not that I really want them to play for a while. I wouldn't be sad if you only played for an hour and then we're like, that was a great experience moving on to another game. I mean, that's pretty much the whole point of these games, but if I can, I might as well make it a more enjoyable for them if I have that ability. Game manager. Okay. Um I don't know what's what's this what's this game even called? I guess like Maybe I can call it game man. Oh my god. Maybe I can call it game manager. And it won't break anything. Yeah, but I do think this is going to be my last day streaming this game thought. And then I'll probably just finish the rest on my own time. 
um, just because it'll be a little bit faster and I'm already overdue for this one. Albeit it wasn't because I broke my back, but no excuses, I guess. I said a game a month and I'm trying to deliver. Handles the crazy taxi like game. Handles the crazy taxi like game. Starts, ends, manages. Yeah, I don't like. Yeah, I honestly hate namespaces. I did consider that if I needed to, but I don't know why I don't like them. I don't know if I don't know how to use them appropriately, but I just hate. And I guess it, I guess really all I'd have to do is say like using um, silkworm or whatever I make the, and then I would, and then not everything in there. Yeah, I guess I don't know why I'm so against namespaces. I guess I've just never really needed them, so it seemed like extra stuff I wouldn't didn't need. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you use them on like huge projects, but my projects are pretty small. Okay, game manager, start game, starts, ends, manages. Okay, cool. So I suppose what is gonna happen in here, really? Okay, so there's a UI component, but that'll be handled through events. Okay, and then let's say that Okay, there's a UI component that'll be handled through events. So then this thing will really, I suppose. Well. Basically, I need some sort of clock, some sort of countdown. I need checkpoints. I need that count down to reset upon checkpoints. And I need the checkpoint There's for sure going to be bugs in this game, but hey, whatever. UI component that's handled through events, basically I need some sort of countdown, I need checkpoints. It seems like all of this stuff is kind of going to... I guess I could... I guess they could all interface through game manager. Either I do events or they interface through game manager and like the checkpoint, I would like dependency inject myself into it and then the checkpoint would say like, oh, uh, they got the checkpoint and then the game manager would check with the timer and say, okay, the time it's less than this. The other option would be to just, um, I suppose the other option would be an event and you hit the checkpoint and it fires some event that game manager is listening to. I would just really like events. I'm probably, no, because, sorry, it wouldn't be an event. It would just be a static call on game manager that checkpoints, it would say like checkpoint hit, and then it would reset the timer. There's gotta be some timer object. So it's gotta be connected to some timer object. Okay, cool. So let's go in here. Let's do a countdown. Mm. Scripts, UI, menus, countdown. A countdown UI that displays how much time you have left. That displays how much time you have left in your 
speedrun. Okay, very cool. So that's fairly simple. Basically, we just need a public void reset. Public void reset. And a float. And a public float time. I guess we can just call it cur time. And we'll do a get private set. I love the get private set. Huge fan of it. It's mixed with the public so that anybody can access it, but nobody can um, set it except you. I think that's fun. I'm sure there's another way to do that, but I do it this way. Okay, cool. So current time. And then so basically it's going to have a void update. Basically it'll be this void update and I'm gonna need to have a text mess pro here. Void starts and there's gonna be Uh, I guess it's not exactly internal, that one. Internal text mesh pro U G Y. Using TMP pro. What's wrong with this? Pretty sure that's what I wrote. Okay, whatever. Countdown text, and then we'll say countdown text equals. You know what, honestly, we'll just make this public. Make that public, and then we'll in here do count on text dot text equals cur time dot round to num decimals zero Yes, yeah, so I have a bunch of games in mind that I, I have a lot of games. I think we can go take a look at them, probably. Hopefully I don't have anything inappropriate on there. <laughs> Maybe, let me. Let's see. Um... Game ideas. Yeah, so VR Minesweeper, Whale Hunting, You're a Bat, so you like, <laughs> you like Swing, and I was gonna make it Echo Location too. So I, I don't know what I was gonna do with it, but I basically just wanted to make you a bat and have you not be able to see even though it's VR. And the only way to see is to be like, ah, ga -ga, and, and uh, do Echo Location off of the walls and stuff like that. I think it would just be so funny to watch people play that game. And again, like, I make them one a month, so if people only play for 15 minutes, it's really no skin off my back. Um, baseball, I really would like to make a full VR baseball game. Samurai Cut, uh, VR Olympics, Dog Sledding, Mother Load, but in VR, Pacific Rim Battle Bot. I guess I already did Super Monkey Ball, so I can get rid of that. Um, a league like, so something like Rocket League, Cellcorm I can get rid of because I already did it. I was considering making a speed dating application. Um, I think that would be fun. And then maybe some form of survivor. Again, that would have to be. Yeah, the bad thing would be so ridiculous, but I think just so funny to do. Plus it would just be cool to have echo location in VR. I've actually made a game like that before and it, it was really cool to only see when you're kind of echoing. 
Okay, so every frame it's gonna set the time, and then there's this reset. Okay, so that's cool. And then over here, I'm gonna have a public public countdown countdown, and then we'll basically do a public static. No, it can't really be static, can it? So then I either make it a singleton or I just do events. I'm just thinking I need to access the countdown in this method, but this countdown is not static and it won't be static. I think I have like a generics helper package that has a singleton thing on it. And this is why packages are for the win. I think it's called generics helper. Oh my packages. It's crazy how bad I am at the alphabet. Okay. I believe that's how that works. Um, checkpoint hit. This isn't the best way to code this, but I'm not too worried about it. It's not the worst way to code it either. So, you know, I really do like using events that way. But I mean, like a game manager is supposed to manage the game. So I guess it makes sense that you would be telling them that the checkpoint is hit and stuff like that, and then they'll decide what to do with it, do with that information. You've hit a checkpoint. If countdown .cur time is greater than zero, or even equal to zero, no, let's do greater than zero. I don't know how you would do this because it'll there will be something else that says they failed or something. But let's just return if they're not, and then basically there will be some sort of uh, set new checkpoint. Very cool. And hey to whoever just joined. We are currently making a game called Awesome AP Orb, or not Awesome AP Orb. I'm getting confused on my games. The Silkworm, uh, and we are creating a sort of crazy taxi game for it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Feel free to introduce yourself as well. We got Thought Drifter in here, he's a cool guy. Let's see, and then set a new checkpoint, okay. Set a new checkpoint. They've gotten the other. So that will be the real meat of this. The rest of this is just kind of simple logic. Set a new checkpoint, although not very hard. I imagine I'm just gonna take a circle and raycast at a few points on that uh, radius along the radius of it, it still um, is maybe a little bit harder. Okay, cool. Set the new checkpoint. Okay, cool. And then I guess you'd be calling this in here too. Set new checkpoint. Internal. Um, bool game in progress. false if game in progress return before I forget that okay very cool um, so now they can start the game let me go over to universal menu and I think I did yeah I had it as void but I believe I do dot instance 
Very cool. I don't normally use singletons, I'll be honest, and that's purely just because I don't like writing dot instance, but, you know, is what it is. Okay, very cool. Let's see if we can... Oh, and Thought Shifter, if you, have any, if you have any game ideas you'd like me to see, I'm really open to anything. I can't guarantee I'll make it um, over the other ideas, but I've gotten some pretty good ideas from people. I honestly, I say, I tell people that I'm just like, I'm able to make games, and I do, but I never have any good game ideas. I just kind of make what other people tell me to make, so. Let's see here. I guess I want to make this checkpoint real quick. If I can. There it is, there's the city, the lost city of Atlantis. So I imagine I'll just use a line renderer for this. I think that's how that would work. I believe I could use some sort of cylinder. Mm. Do I have Text Mesh Pro in here? I don't, or not Text Mesh Pro, Pro Builder. Okay, cool. Let's create an object. Let's call it Checkpoint. Let's take that and let's do Game Object Align with View. Let's do this rotation. Oh. I have a list in a notebook somewhere I'll go through it and see. Yeah, let me know. If you have if you see any games that you think would be up my alley, having seen that list of games that I'm trying to make, um, let me know. Okay, cool. So we have this, then we need to create another empty. We'll call it the line to sky and in it we'll put a line renderer and we will I guess not use world space and we will take the positions and we'll have two and that all looks good this should be zero as well though except this will be a hundred All right, so I think you see where I'm going with this. So now you have this line in the sky. So now you have this line in the in ye old sky, and it should be thicker, I think. Maybe three. Will not cast shadows. Why am I forgetting? There's like a way to make it skinnier. Oh, here we go. Maybe something like that. And we'll probably make this, make it go up 300. It's really tall so that you really can't miss it. And you know what, honestly, the width could probably just be, probably just be one. And then let's go ahead and give it, not default, but let me see. Let's make a, let's make a material for it.
Would it be UI? Taxi game. Oh. Checkpoint beam. Okay, and we'll basically take this. And we will do... All right, come on, seriously, this is horrible. We'll just do color, and we'll just make it that, and then we'll just make this color like a nice blue or something. Actually, you know what, it probably should, well, let's just make it a nice blue for now. And then when we're far away from it, it should still see it. Ooh, okay. It is hard to see from far away. Okay, let's not worry about that for now. We'll call this checkpoint base. We'll put that on there, and then we'll go into arts, shaders, and we'll make a new shader. And how is it gonna work exactly? We'll see, we'll work our way through it. We're basically gonna try to make like a fading. You'll see. It'll be pretty standard, nothing crazy about it. Oh, dang. Checkpoint base, open it up. Let's go ahead and do a um, position object. Put that in here. We go ahead and save it. Come out here. Come out here. Go into materials. This checkpoint. We'll wait a uh, freaking 15 seconds for this to do whatever it is that it's doing. That's bad. I mean, that's truly bad. Okay, then we'll go to shader graphs and we'll do checkpoint base. Okay, so sort of halfway there is where that starts. I can't use world position, so I need to use the object space, but I would have preferred it started at this, although I think that should be fine. I think I can just do an interval. Intervalize. And split. So we'll take in this and we'll take that as the input. We'll get rid of this. We'll do lower bound equals negative one, upper bound equals one, and the output is zero to one. Cool. And that should fix that. Yes, it did. Okay, awesome. Some basic interval math there. And then we will, that's zero to one. That's not exactly what we want. So we'll get this set up, we'll move this back, we'll get a subtract, we'll do one minus that, and that's actually what we want. And we'll just check real quick. Okay, I was worried about that. Really? 
Okay, that's a little confusing. Let's see. Because this is for sure 0 to 1. For sure, 0 to 1. So then 1 minus that should be 1 to 0. Okay. Maybe it's not zero to one. I mean, maybe it's maybe it's zero to negative two. Okay. But it can't be. I mean, I'm trying to. I started looking in the shading graph, confusing as hell. What is it that we got some extra time? Is there something you're having trouble with that I can tell you about real quick? I yeah, it was a little, it was a little confusing up front, but now that I'm getting it, it's um, really cool stuff. And I was a gra I was kind of a graphics programmer before this anyway, so I, I'd say I understood most of it. Okay, um, what the heck? It must be that this is not coded correctly. It must be coming out to. I just wouldn't say it looks like that. There. I guess it does. I guess it does look like it gets too. Dang, does that mean my interval eyes is wrong? Okay, no worries. Okay, now it's one to z it's not one to zero though. It's one to like god dang it, what the heck is happening right now? Come on. Alright, multiply by point five, let's take a look. Okay. Yeah, because that doesn't look like zero to one. I just need to get handle the basics first. I wouldn't know where to start if I wanted a specific result. I'd have to play around with it more to get experience. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Is there something you're trying to build currently that, that uh, is confusing you? Because I could maybe give you pointers on it. So if this was 0 to 2, what am I doing? How is this, how is this hard right now? This interval lies must just not be working at all. This must be like, it must like be one right here and then the rest of it is just one. What if I told you that I missed you? You lay right here by my side. I can't bring myself to quit you. No, not right now. We'll keep. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to ask in the Discord or whatnot. No matter how many times I've tried. So it looks like my intervalized function can't handle negative numbers. So I'm not going to fix that right now. But what I'll do instead, I think, is just do what I believe will fix this, which is get rid of that, delete it, take that split, multiply it by 0.5. And you add 0.5, which is a classic way to normalize a value. I'm just getting rid of everything so that I can see here. Okay, 0 to 1, there we go. Pretend we 
Okay, one minus this, and then we invert it. Okay. Great. Okay, so now, go to these graph settings, change that to transparent, and should be good. And the alpha will also be this. Okay, cool, and it'll be something like that. And then we'll basically hit it with the all this treatment. So that's what I was going for, which I'm sure now makes sense. Tell you what, organizing a shader graph is like a huge pain in the ass. Life gets in the way. Okay, you know, and I'm no artist genius, so I'm going to probably just leave it at something like that. But I'd say I'm happy with it, personally. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. It's su it's surprising what you can do with something simple. Yeah, so it'll basically be like that. You'll get to it. I maybe could even take this and do a little bit of this action. Yeah, let's create a let's you know, I'm I'm already on this. So let's create a Oh my gosh, I have so many scripts now. This is ridiculous. <laughs> um, crazy taxi. I'm just going to bundle it all in here. This is the last thing I'm doing, so let's call it Bob. Bob and object. I think I want it to be in fixed update actually. Public float amplitude. Public float speed. Word start internal um, vector three OG pos OG pos equals transform dot position transform position equals OG pos dot position OG pos plus math f dot sign um, time dot time times speed times amplitude Plus new vector three, very cool. So then we'll come over here. So we'll come over here and on the line to sky, we'll add Bob. And it will Bob probably at a one meter and a speed of one. Let's start with that. 
start the game. Let's go back to the scene. Okay, needs to bob faster and needs to bob less. Very cool. Okay, and then on the cylinder, we need to have a capsule. I guess the capsule collateral will work, sure. And we're gonna have to add a layer, and it's gonna have to be called checkpoint. Very cool. And then we're gonna have to set that to checkpoint, and then we're gonna have to go into physics, and we're gonna take that, and we're gonna get rid of all this crazy stuff. Except player. I did not skip that on purpose, that was accidental, but it, for a second it looked like I was the fastest clicker in the world. Okay, so we did that. So now the player will interact with checkpoint. That's cool. We'll interact with that checkpoint. It is going to be a trigger. All right, my throat is starting to hurt pretty bad. Give me one second thought. I'm gonna go grab some water. And if someone joins, let them know what I'm doing. Okay, cool. It took me a little longer because my dog was attacking me. You know how they are. They're trained. Okay. I wonder how I changed this. I don't really appreciate this cog-looking icon. Yeah, whatever. I don't know what I just did. Hopefully I didn't break it. <laughs> I had never seen that button before, so I just clicked it. Okay, cool. So we have this. And then the other thing we'll probably want to do is grow line with And this will basically have the line renderer line line equals get components line renderer okay line dot. Distance equals vector three dot distance. Um, transform dot position, 
and layer spy dot layer trans dot position. Okay, so the distance in between those scale equals my math dot intervalize distance. Input lower bound is going to be zero. Input upper bound will be, let's just call it 500. Out lower is uh, zero and one. Okay, cool. So now we have the scale, and then we'll basically have, okay, so then we'll have um, max heights, public float, max width. Max height and max width, um, and then we'll basically do okay. Set line dot set position at zero at one equals vector three dot up times max height times scale let's make sure it's always at least a little bit wrong with this okay and we're just basically doing some simple stuff here <clears throat> okay cool so let's Call the max height 500. Let's call the max width. Honestly, maybe this should be more like 0.2. Okay, cool. And now let's do a public. Test scale. Just so that we can take a look at this real quick. It's getting harder to remember. The moment you slip from my hands. Huh. Looks like it's working.
What the heck, Soites? Is it in here? What am I missing? Why is this not working? It's setting the position. Oh, why is it turned off? Why was it turned off? Okay, something is turning that off. I imagine it's one of these. I guess my question would be why nobody was doing that before. Why well, that wasn't happening before. Size is this. I wonder if that would be hard to see. Okay, cool. That seems good. So we'll get rid of test scale. Okay, and then... You know what it is. find all these line renderers and I disable them so that won't really be a problem that'll be fine um, okay cool because uh, it'll turn back on once the camera turns back on okay sorry this checkpoint sorry my nose is itching me Okay, so I have this checkpoint. We'll call it checkpoint base. And basically we'll need to make another script and we'll call it checkpoint. And then this, oh my God, all right, I'm gonna let this dog in. You're so crazy. Yeah, I know you want to attack me, you're attacking me. Attack me, attack me. Ah. Ah. Alright, let's see. What's the game? manager know when they've hit a checkpoint cool nothing crazy about that and it's really just one simple thing and it's going to be 
void on trigger enter on trigger enter game manager dot instance dot checkpoint hit cool so just let him know um, not very modular I'll say but these scripts are pretty much all meant to work together anyway I suppose and if I have to rewrite this script here I don't think it's gonna kill me let's see okay so now I have a checkpoint that will probably work pretty well I have a game manager that you can start a game and it says a, a checkpoint has happened then now I need well I need a lot of stuff I need a lot of stuff but let's see if we can just make this game manager happen you know what I could do first I guess I could do the countdown well let me th let me think is it okay to do it in this order I suppose that it probably is okay your manager is a singleton. It will have params. These parameters will be public, float, distance between check. Sorry, just eating something off the floor. Distance between checkpoints. Let's call it 500 meters. Then. needed objects cool okay so basically cool this isn't anything that crazy realized I'm gonna need to know where the checkpoint is checkpoint position and then in here it's gonna be a vector 3 cur checkpoint position cool and then if I go over here I'm gonna have to do transform dot position okay all right yeah so what am I what exactly am I trying to do here basically to ensure that it's still on the map, I'm going to need to Hey. Echo, stop it. What are you eating? Frog ass. Stop eating random stuff. And don't look me after you eat it either. I don't know what you ate. Give me one second here, let me pick up whatever it is this dog just ate. Don't even want to find out what it is. Just gonna throw it away. Okay, move. Yeah, they do. I mean, they do for sure. Um, I gotta run, bro. I'll catch you in the Discord or next stream, whatever you're. You start them again. Well, I'm going to be streaming. I just think that um, I'll probably not be streaming. I'll probably do one more stream of this, and then after that, I'll probably finish up whatever I need to on my own time. Um, I don't know what I'll be streaming next, but I'll, I'll be streaming. But yeah, all right, I'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by. I would appreciate it, as always. Keep me company. I only got 30 minutes left anyway. All right, set a new checkpoint. Okay.
for int x equals zero x less than, let's call it 30, let's call it 24. Recast hits. Hits equals recast hits twenty four. Int num casts next checkpoints equals twenty four. Num casts. What is that? Are you kidding me? I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh my goodness, I've never seen this in my freaking life. Why is it? This is horrible. I'm gonna lose my mind. What is this? Okay. Int num hits equals zero. Okay, cool. So then we're basically going to equals three sixty divided by num cast checkpoints cool and then basically in here we'll do equals three dot right mm -hmm. dots mm -hmm. 
there's room there's no rotate rotate back there This is kind of lazy programming, but that's okay. Well, let's do this. Just between checkpoints, that's your OG direction. Then you're gonna take this and you're gonna multiply that. And then OG direction, then you're gonna basically do a raycast origin will be direction so now it'll rotate around this sphere here direction vector 3 dot down max distance I guess so we'll do a thousand okay origin plus the direction plus vector 3 dot up times Let's make that a thousand one hundred. Assume there's no buildings any taller than that. New little guitar. Int mask equals one shifted. Six or nine. Just nine, okay, and then we'll mask this. Let's get some performance out of it. Okay, and then if that if that hits at 
num hits. Okay, I'm just taking a look at this real quick. All right, come on, where's all the... Alright, no worries. Origin director out distance layer mask. Hit. Equals hit and num hits plus plus. Okay, cool. pick a random one and place it okay Count and elapsed. Okay. Keep swallowing water and it's hurting me. <coughs> Thanks for protecting me, Echo. Int selection oh equals random dot range zero num hits. Exclusive check. 
checkpoint dot position equals hits selection dot point. Very nice. Reset countdown. Countdown dot reset. Very cool. And that should be everything necessary. You need a little guitar in a hotel girl. Okay, I'm not gonna check it over because I do believe it is correct. I do believe that I have correctly programmed that. All right, and we'll do input dot get key down key code space just to test this out set new checkpoint dang it Okay, I don't know in what world I did that. It's pretty embarrassing. Okay, set so new checkpoint, cool. Got a little guitar in a hotel girl. Checkpoint. And I do not have a countdown yet. I've not made the countdown yet. I suppose I can make that. I suppose I can make it real quick. Basically what I need is the prefabs, UI, menu handle, countdown, Menu, game object, move to view, under it, will not have a universal menu, I will instead, and I won't have that either, what I will have, what I will have is a countdown, yep, good old countdown. And then I need to take that prefab and I need to unpack it. I need to get rid of that. I think I can just move that out there. Get rid of that. Take that. I'm just gonna make a tan. I'm just gonna center that bad boy. Set that to zero. Very cool. Okay, and we're gonna increase that font size. Very nice. Number. Okay, and then we're gonna take this and do countdown. We're gonna give it that. We're gonna take the game manager. We're gonna give it that. Got a little hope down, little hope down girl. Okay, and I might as well go into countdown and set Okay, I don't know what I want to do yet on that one. The, the reset is gonna set cur time to The reset is gonna set the current time to 50 for now. And over here, we'll say if current time is less than 
zero. Wait, did I do that in game manager? It's less than zero. Game manager dot instance dot check uh what was it that elapsed? Countdown elapsed to let them know. Okay, nothing crazy there. All right, that was quick enough. Got a little guitar in a hotel room. Hmm, I don't see why this wouldn't work. Should be working. You have universal menu, which will be loaded in, and And this will already be loaded, so where the game manager will be, I mean. It's got to just be the naming. All right, let's take a look here. Again, we are having trouble with this. And it is saying there are two event systems in the scene. This will be true. Get rid of that. Okay, that is gone, but this is still here. does not really make sense. Dog, stop eating that. I think it might be because it's... No, that doesn't make sense. 
because you're setting the instance. What are you doing, dog? <laughs> Not countdown, curtain. Okay, cool. Dog, you have a problem. Sham, 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 sham. Okay. It is having a hard time getting Game Manager. You know what, fuck it, no singleton. All right, whatever, it doesn't work. Let's do mono behavior. Let's go over to Countdown, public, game manager, game manager, everybody gets a reference. Got a little down. Countdown and checkpoint, I believe, are the two that need it. Public. Game manager, game manager. No more instance, just this. Okay, didn't want to do that, but you know what? Who cares, really? Okay, hmm. Okay, that's a problem. Okay, but I will deal with that later. And for right now, just be happy. You got a little low down, a little low down now. Huh? Alright, you get a game manager. Did I never add this? I guess I didn't. Okay. All right, 
come on. All right, let me fix this real quick. Yeah. Prefabs, UI, menu handler, universal menu. That's so bad. I made such a mistake. Okay, so after all, it was not actually the singleton that was causing me issues. So now I have to go and change those back. I don't believe it was the namespace. It's okay. Okay, very cool. Um, so I guess I thought it would call in the scene. Sure, testing.
Okay. This will be the last thing we do, and then we'll end the stream for today. We'll just make this a hundred. Or maybe we'll make it fifty. Okay, let's see, because it should be moving. I don't know why it's not. Okay, let's see here. Mm, it is not calling the thing that I'm calling. So we'll see if we can figure that out real quick. Okay, so call testing. Testing is right here. It's called in start on game manager, which is in the scene. So it will. S okay, for some reason it was <laughs> turned off. No, no, nobody would uh, be able to guess why on that one. That's okay, though. And yet it's still not calling. Okay, so in start, testing, call it, while true, wait five seconds, set a new checkpoint.
<laughs> oh, oh my god. It's just because the game pauses when the when I'm not in the headset. Such a hard life. Okay. Okay, and I think we'll call it there for today. That was pretty good. We got most of the stuff we needed in for that. And tomorrow we should be able to finish it up. So hopefully that will happen, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for joining today.